My name is Irina Oleansky. I live in Tel Aviv. I immigrated to Israel from Russia in the 90s. I'm a musician and producer. I really love world and ethnic music, and it was music that led me to start my project. For two years, I traveled through Africa and Asia with my mobile studio and recorded music of dispersed Jewish communities. I visited 10 communities in Western and Eastern Africa, India and China, sometimes in remote and even dangerous places. During my travels, I experienced truly special and diverse cultures. What started out as just a musical journey ended up taking me into a whole new world. The stunning histories and traditions of these communities remain unknown to most of the world. I would like to share with you the unique and diverse world that I discovered in my journeys. The north of Ethiopia, the roof of Africa. The Jews who call themselves Bet Israel, which means the house of Israel, lived here since biblical times. Their neighbors refer to them as Falashas, which means exiles. This is the hill of Ambova, where the Bet Israel used to gather and pray for their return to Jerusalem. that there are no more Jews here. Other people settled in their houses. And the synagogue is unlocked only for the rare visitors, who come mostly from Israel. Some visitors light your candles in memory of their relatives and friends. The villages that the Bera Israel inhabited for more than two millennia have disappeared or been turned into museums and souvenir shops. The first individual attempts of Beta Israel to reach Israel 
were made already in the late 1940s. In the 1970s, Beta Israel immigration to Israel was officially banned by the revolutionary Ethiopian government. The Jews of Ethiopia fled to refugee camps in Sudan. In these refugee camps, they suffered from hunger, diseases, and persecutions. Many died on their way to Sudan or in the refugee camps. Those who survived were evacuated to Israel in a series of secret operations conducted by the Mossad. In 1991, more than 14,000 Ethiopian Jews were airlifted to Israel in Operation Solomon. The exodus of the Jews from Ethiopia continued till recent times. In 2013, the last group of Ethiopian Jews arrived in Israel. One of the first European Jews who made contact with Beta Israel was Dr. Jacques Feitlovich, a Polish Jew who studied Ethiopian languages at the Sorbonne in Paris. He traveled to Ethiopia for the first time in 1904 with the support of Baron Rothschild. For years he lived among the Jews of Ethiopia. The accounts of his journeys can be found in numerous books and letters that are available today in a special collection in Soraski Central Library at Tel Aviv University. The Feitlovich collection is an outstanding source of information for those who study the history of Ethiopian Jewry. I spent a copious number of hours poring over his accounts, most of which were written in German. In one of his books across Abyssinia, my second trip to the Falashas, written in 1910, I come across a very interesting account of his visit to Addis Ababa, the North Shore, the region to the north of Addis Ababa. Hier in Addis Abeba fand ich auch Gelegenheit, einige Angehörige der sogenannten Tabibans kennenzulernen. Die Tabibans werden von der Bevölkerung Shoahs für Juden, Falashas, gehalten. Dagegen bezeichnen sie sich selbst als Christen. Sie leben in ganz Shoah zerstreut und sind besonders zahlreich in der Provinz Ankober. In dieser Gegend besitzen sie ganze Ortschaften, wo sie gemeinsam leben und gemeinsame Wirtschaft haben. Sie betreiben die gleichen Handwerke wie die Falaschas. Einige von ihnen üben sie auch am Hofe Menileks aus und nehmen daher dort angesehene Stellungen ein. Daraus, dass sie am Samstag keine Arbeit verrichten, einen besonderen Gottesdienst an diesem Tage abhalten, andere, den Christen unbekannte, Feste feiern und die jüdischen Reinigungsgesetze streng beobachten, schließen ihre christlichen Landleute, dass sie Juden, Falaschas, seien. Sie werden in Shoah in gleicher Weise verleumdet, zum Beispiel Budas zu sein, wie die Falaschas in anderen Landesteilen Abessiniens. Ihr Misstrauen, das unüberwindlich schien, zeigte sich immer aufs Neue, sobald ich eine Frage an sie richtete. Erst nach sehr eingehenden, mühevollen Verhandlungen gelang es mir, ihr Zutrauen zu gewinnen und damit über sie das Folgende festzustellen. Sie stammen aus der Provinz Dembea und sollen mit Nikusi, der gegen Ende des 17. Jahrhunderts, zur Zeit der Kaiser von Abyssinien Johannes des I. und Yasu des I., Statthalter von Shoah war, in großer Anzahl nach Shoah übersiedelt worden sein. Who were these people that Feitlovich believed to be Jews? And why were they so suspicious of strangers? Unfortunately, there is no Baron Rothschild today to sponsor me in my research. But I have one advantage over Feitlovich. I have access to many resources on the internet. 
After hours of searching, I find a young Ethiopian man by the name of Demeke. Demeke says that he is a member of the Jewish community of Addis Ababa, whose ancestors migrated from Noshoa. I will travel to Ethiopia to try to find the group that Faitlovich was talking about. After a four and a half hour flight, I land in Addis Ababa, the capital of Ethiopia. The Mick and his friends are waiting for me at the arrival gate. We're driving through Addis Ababa, a rapidly growing and developing vibrant city. We're heading to a neighborhood on the outskirts of the northern part of Addis Ababa called Kachena. Kachena is a neighborhood known for its craftsmen, weavers, potters, ironsmiths. There are also many taxi drivers. It is one of the poorest neighborhoods of Addis Ababa, rarely visited by tourists and even Ethiopians. Here, on one of the narrow cobbled streets in Kachene, a great surprise is awaiting me. A synagogue where is the Mecca explains to me the Jews who call themselves Beta Israel gather for religious services. The synagogue is called Bet Salam or Beit Shalom, which means the house of peace. It was founded in 2003 by the use of the community. This is the only synagogue of the community where the services are held openly and visitors are welcome. ያው <laughs> ማበረሰብ <laughs> ሰላም <laughs> ሌሎቹ the Beta Israel of Noshoa do not have a written history, but preserve their knowledge through an oral history that they transfer from generation to generation. I'm trying to piece together Beta Israel heritage and various historical and religious sources to reconstruct Beta Israel history. The first written account of Ethiopian Jews can be found in the 9th century CE journey diaries of Eldad Adani, a Hebrew-speaking Jewish merchant and traveler who described in his diaries his journey to the land of Kush, today's Ethiopia and Sudan. 
In his diaries, Haddani tells a story of his encounter with the tribes of Dan, Asher, and Naphtali, who dwell on the opposite side of the river of Kush, most likely referring to the Nile. Haddani recounts that when the northern kingdom tribes of Israel went to war against the southern kingdom tribe of Judah, the Danites, who were renowned as skilled warriors, refused to fight against their kinsmen and left Israel for Egypt. Haddani's story relates to biblical events of 9th century BCE when the kingdom of Israel was split into two, the northern kingdom Israel and the southern kingdom Judah. According to Haddani's story, the Danites continued their journey till they reached the land of Cush, where they decided to settle. Later, the Danites were joined by the exiled tribes of Naphtali, Gad and Asher, who fled before the destruction of the First Temple. Haddani also mentions the pious tribe of Moses, the descendants of Levites, who never see other human beings, nor do other humans see them, except for those four tribes who inhabit the opposite side of the river of Kush, with the legendary river Sambatian separating them. The river of sand and stones, surrounded by fire, flowing all the days of the week and ceasing for Sabbath. The mysterious river Sambatian that Hadani describes in his diaries may make you think his story is one of legend rather than one reflecting his own objective observations. Or could Adani really have seen a river of stones and fire? The African continent is split by the Great Reef Valley, which runs across all of Eastern Africa and covers the entire area of Ethiopia from north to south. The reef was created by massive volcanic and seismic activity. There are some 60 active and inactive volcanoes along the reef in Ethiopia alone, including the continuously erupting Erta Ale, notorious for its lake of burning magma. One of such magma lakes or rivers may very well be what Hadani saw on his journeys. It is hard to evaluate today which of Hadani's accounts may be based on facts or legend. Nevertheless, the theory that the Beta Israel of Ethiopia are the descendants of the tribe of Dan was widely accepted by Israeli rabbinical institutions, which in turn brought recognition of the Beta Israel as Jews, according to Halakha, the Code of Religious Laws of Judaism. The biblical book of the prophet Isaiah provides an alternative explanation of how Jews reached the land of Cush. The prophecy of Isaiah refers to return from the Babylonian captivity when in the 6th century BCE the Babylonian king Nebuchadnezzar laid siege to Jerusalem, destroyed the Holy Temple, and took the people of Judah into exile. <laughs> In his diaries, Eldad Adani also mentions that the Israel tribes of Cush have their own king and are continually at war with the Ethiopian kings. Indeed, according to Beta Israel lore, the Jewish kingdom was initially established in the 4th century CE when the emperor Azana of Aksum proclaimed Christianity the religion of the Aksumite Empire. Following a civil war between the Jewish and the Christian communities, the Beta Israel forged an independent kingdom that was located in the Simeon Mountains, the Dembe region, and in the northern part of Lake Tana, with the capital in Gondar. 
the most renowned Bet Israel king was Gideon IV, who managed to defeat the Aksumite Empire. King Gideon himself was killed in the battle, and his daughter Judith, also called Kudit, inherited the kingdom and took command. Queen Judith signed a pact with the Agro pagan tribes. Around 960 CE, the large tribal confederation led by Queen Judith invaded the capital of Aksa and conquered and destroyed the city, including many churches and monasteries, and imposed Jewish rule over the Aksumite Empire. To this day, Judy's Stelly Field in Axum remains a poignant reminder of these battles and the destruction that took place here more than a thousand years ago. <laughs> The golden age of the Beth Israel Kingdom was between the 9th and 13th centuries CE. However, with the rise of the Christian Solomonic dynasty in Ethiopia, followed by centuries of wars and confrontations between Jews and Christians, the Jews lost their independence, and most Jewish lands were annexed by Emperor Yeshak at the beginning of the 15th century CE. Yeshak decreed, he who is baptized in the Christian religion may inherit the land of his father, otherwise let him be Falasha, landless. At approximately that time, the group of Beth Israel began their journey southwards to Showa, then an anonymous kingdom, in search of religious freedom and better living conditions. In the beginning of the 17th century CE, the Emperor Susenius I, who himself converted to Catholicism, waged war against the remnants of the Jewish kingdom and managed to conquer the whole territory. Jewish writings and religious books were burned, and the practice of any form of Judaism was forbidden. And it was at this time that the Jews started migrating en masse southward to the North Shore region. Ankober, where many Beth Israel settled, was the capital of Shoa and the residence of its kings. In the 19th century CE, the king of Shoa, Menelik II, built a new palace on top of Mount Toto, the mountain overlooking modern-day Addis Ababa. On top of Mount Toto, in the Church of Mary, Menelik was crowned as emperor of all of Abyssinia, today's Ethiopia. The Jews of Noshoa followed the king and settled in the village of Kichenu, not far from Toto. Their skills and crafts played an essential role in the military success of Menelik, as well as in the construction of Addis Ababa. Not much has changed since then in Kichen. Crafts still remain the main source of income for its residents. I learned the, the craft transfer from father to son. Uh, Mill works on hand, uh, handcrafts like uh, blacksmith weaving and lasering. Women make pottery. Almost every house in Kichene is also a craftwork factory or cooperative. The crafts play an important role in the economy of Addis Ababa and all Ethiopia. We are the backbone of the country. Everything is produced in the Kajani. Every economic part is touched by our people in transportation, in handcrafts. I am very happy being Jewish and being handcrafted.
As in the past, the artisans of Kichene also supply their products to the Coptic Orthodox Church. If you go to every church, from cross to the ark, everything we do for them. The drum, the dressing from the wuli. Kachana craftswomen produce the utensils for the traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony. And she is a potter. She makes different kinds of pottery. Like a coffee ceremony, have you seen the yeah. coffee? Mm -hmm. That is uh, produced only in Kachani. The Kachani crafts are available at any market that is available. So here, Gentiles came and they collect different potteries from each house. The person who makes this one is called Buddha. Buddha means evil eyed. That means a person can live as a person like at, at day and change it himself into Haina at night. And we are the cause of every disease for them, for the Gentiles, they said. Therefore, Gentiles do not want to work handicraft, not to be discriminated. Even today, in 21st century Addis Ababa, the craftsmen of Kichene have to deal with social stigmatization since early childhood. Discrimination follows community members even after their death. Those who disclose their Jewish identity are refused burial ground. This remains the main reason for hiding their Jewish identity. In Kichene, I got to know Abraham Peshome, a humble young man devoted to Judaism. The community was shattered by the news of his sudden tragic death. Uh, Christian, 
አይቀበርም ብለውን መንግስት ትልቅ ድጋፍ አድርጎልን Outside Addis Ababa, in the villages of North Shore, where villagers mostly follow old feudal ways, the lives of better Israel community members are still in great danger. Christians, they call us Buddha, which is called Buddha, Kaila, Jeev, Taib. It is evil eyed. You can turn from uh, man to Haina at night. Okay? All the diseases are caused by Jewish, these Haina people. So that they, they push us, they segregate us. Here in Kichena, I had a chance to meet a man who escaped revenge of his fellow villagers in Noshoa. He's living right here in the storage room of the synagogue. ዝሽነ <laughs> ሰነዴ <laughs> Even though persecution and social stigmatization have made the Jews of Noshoa publicly hide their identity and pretend to be Christians, it has also enabled them to protect their Jewish identity for centuries. And, in a sense, it has helped them to avoid assimilation. Simply put, no one dared marry a hyena man. As we know, from generation to generation, transferred information, they have also information from generation to generation. For example, we don't select wife from their uh, village. Just we marry from our Jewish community. If unknowingly, or because of love, someone from the Jewish and from the Gentile make marriage, the near future they divorce because of the name Buddha. If he, their son is sick and the woman say, you eat my children. Persecutions and discrimination force the Jews to hide. We have uh, 15 hidden synagogues in Ethiopia, which is located in the northern shore, just north part of Addis Ababa. Our fathers construct that one because they refuse accepting a uh, Coptic church. Kings, together with the priest, you know, they forced this community to accept Christianity. And then when the force become powerful and powerful, our people decide to accept Christianity and live uh, with superficial to the Christianity and they keep their Judaica part secretly. And they go to church, after church, they go to synagogue. No one knows this 50 synagogue except members of the community. Our synagogue was 44, but be because of the suffering, it became decreasing and decreasing, now we have 15. <laughs> Because I sat, I was <laughs> a little bit of a little bit of 
ከዛ አቤት ይስመጣ ያዘይ ሰማዎቹ መዝሙሮች እሞክራቸው ነበር በመዝሙሮቹ ውስጥ ማስተላለፍ የፈለኩት ዋን ነው ነገር የአምላክ ስርዓት ነው ወይኛ ያዝ ነው የአይሁድነት ስርዓት ክብር መሆኑን ከማንም የተሻለ መሆኑ ቤተሰቦቻችንን ሌላውም ሰው ማወቅ ስለላለበት ያንን ማስተላለፍ የመጀመር fathers have their own point from the torah and they narrate you know no reading but they narrate this poem in front of the people in the synagogue uh, those who can read will tell our history for gentiles unknowingly you know they fear even themselves therefore no book in our uh, synagogue most of the practices are not in the reading they do they express their judaism into practice uh, this younger sir synagogue uh, practicing judaism both the modern judaism and the traditional judaism from uh, pre talmudic because we youngsters have access for information uh, we use website so many communication tools and we can read torah during passover and other jewish holidays as well as for special occasions the jews of kitchena practice animal sacrifice the animal is slaughtered according to jewish law using an extremely sharp knife there are parts of the animal's body that are forbidden to use such as the sciatic nerve. This is removed, and blood is drained from the animal. On Passover, the blood from the sacrifice is smeared on doorposts as a reminder of the biblical events of Exodus from Egypt. Before Passover, the community members are busy cleaning their houses. The iron utensils are heated on fire, and pottery items, which may have been in contact with leavened foods, which are forbidden during Passover, are broken and set on fire. After that, women prepare special unleavened bread, called Yefasika Kita, or what most mainstream Jewish people would recognize as matzah. The daf is uh, ready before 50 minutes. In the synagogue, the children and adults are enjoying searching and burning chametz, leavened foods, a custom practiced by Jews all over the world. Baruch Adonai Elohenu Melech HaOlam Asher Kedishano Bemitzvotav Vetevanu Al Biur Chamed This was something the Jews of Kichene learned from Jewish visitors and through the internet.
Shabbat is the center of the community life. Since Friday morning, the community members are busy with Shabbat preparations, especially women who cook Shabbat meals and bake special Shabbat bread. However, only men are allowed to cut the Shabbat bread. Later, the Shabbat bread will be brought to the synagogue for Kabbalat Shabbat, the Jewish ceremony of welcoming the Sabbath that takes place right before sunset. Opening a synagogue in Kichene created many conflicts within the community. In Ethiopia, as you, as you know, freedom came just this government, okay? Before this, their religion and the feudal do not give freedom for the people, not only the Jewish and for the other also. But now it is uh, democratic government. It is based on ethnic group so that it is a best condition for Jewish to emerge. However, many elders of the community believe that the time has not come yet. Did it cause any problems to your family? Most residents of Kichene have only a remote idea about their connection with the Beta Israel. This is because the elders of the secret synagogues share their knowledge only with those who join a secret synagogue. For those who remain their whole lives without knowing of their Jewish identity, they inevitably learn the truth when an elder from a secret synagogue visits them on their deathbed. Our community uh, basically uh, are descendant from the uh, Jew community, from the North Shore. I have been practicing uh, Christianity. My parents have been practicing both the Judaism and Christianity. They, are, they have been practicing uh, Christianity uh, for pretension, but they strictly uh, follow Judaism. You know, but uh, our parents are not willing to transfer the principles, the tenets of Judaism, because they fear that uh, if our children are well aware of uh, their identity, they may expose themselves, and the history may repeat them, uh, itself. You know, the persecution, the segregation, the discrimination. Uh, without knowing uh, identity, it is really uh, difficult. Mm. When you go to church, is there any segregation in church for Kichana community members? I don't really observe. 
if you want to be an Orthodox priest. Can mm. you? Mm. Okay. No. no. Your daughter, does she have any knowledge at all? About, about the Jew? Yeah. No. At the same time, the children of Beth Salam congregation grow up as Jews and do not have any knowledge about Christianity. For deeper understanding, I'm traveling to Mora, together with my friends from Kichene, a place in Noshoa where the first migrants from Gondor settled. I present myself as an American tourist filming Ethiopian cracks, because, as I'm warned, even the word Israel itself can raise unnecessary questions and endanger Balish community members. <laughs> this is, we call it dust. Dust, we are making uh, like a shurawot. You see, uh, without any instrument, sharp. Some of the Balich join us for lunch at a local coffee shop. They still don't give you one? <laughs> Uh, a person who we meet her today now is Jedi. Uh, so immediately uh, our discussion is turned into uh, mundane things. Mundane things. It's the usual life of us. Normal is the Malakatum. Katanish. Katanish Kas Alish. And the Sugan Marathon. Kas Alish. Scatelic. Normally, we can doctor, master, 
የምጥላቸው ሰዎች በጠይቃቸው ሰው አይደለም ጅብ ነው ለነሱ ይሄ እርግጠኝነት ምን ነገር ነው እንደሱ አብረን ይየሉ እየሰራን አብረን ይበላ ማታ ሆዱን ሲያመው ከነሱ ጋር በልቸ ነው ወርዱኝ ይሏል ባለጂ ያለ ያሰሩ እና ይው ይዛሪ አርቦ ወንድም እንደደረ ወዲት አፍ ነው ያው እና ሁለቱ ታስረው ያ ደሞ ተፈልሶቹ ጋር እነኛ ተሻርከው እነኛ እንዲጠፉ አድርጓቸው አሁን እኛ እኛ ለምንግደል ነው በዛ እየፈልኩ Does the government do something to protect you? ምንም ለፖሊስ ሰጣቸው ኢንፎርሜሽን እንኳን ገደሉት ይሉና በዚህ ስንሄድ ባላገራችንም በዚህ ስንሄድ በዚህ ጥቁራቸው Do they consider you Christians? ክርስቲያን የተለየ ሃይማኖት አላችሁ ይሉና ሰንበቴ ምናምን አለ እኛ የነሱንም ሃይማኖት በነከተል ያው እስራኤል ላይ እንደዛች ውስጣችን ነው እናንተ ኦዲት ነው እንጂ የምትከተሉት የኛን አይደለም እስከሚል ይሉና Do you think that in this situation here in Morat it's possible to reveal your identity and stop pretending being Christians or it's impossible here yet You must I have some relative in Morat but my ancestor originally in Marhabit it's a very sea is not far very close to Morat Marhabit when i came to Morat i have a bad memory uh, during 20 years ago i came to visit my relatives to here to celebrate my relative wedding yeah during that time in the wedding place the gentiles assassinated more than five five person my family to attack by bomb i remind uh, for 20 years my bad memories again i'm so sad uh, it's still in the bankruptcy uh, when i came to 20 years ago i think the house the village the morale of the people is better now is destroyed the people is psychologically defeated i will tell you something for the another jewish community all over the world included the israeli government my 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 people see every day killed assassinated this is genocide here but people they never another jewish people they never uh, full information about my community back in Addis Ababa I'm trying to get permission from the elders to visit secret synagogues in North Shore it is not so simple as I'm explained the secret synagogues have never been visited by strangers the Mek and Belaine are arranging a meeting for me with some of the elders after a long discussion I'm finally granted permission to visit a few secret synagogues. The first synagogue we're visiting is located in Giso. We're taken there by the synagogue elder Abu Firdin. After a long ride in a land cruiser across bumpy roads, we reach a point from where we can continue only by foot. You need us to push? Ah. The synagogue is located in a gorge between mountains up to 3000 meters high. A sharp climb in altitude followed by sharp descent leaves us breathless and the lack of any trodden trail makes trekking through the rocky mountain slopes extremely difficult <laughs> however Abba Firde, who is used to such daily trekking navigates us through the mountains with astonishing ease 
nobody wa want to come here because it has a long uh, a long distance and a challenging mountain so gentiles will not come here finally after more than three hour trekking we can see the sinaga The synagogue is located near a river. This is because the Beta Israel strictly follow the biblical laws of purification. At the entrance, shoes are removed and hands are washed. This is the tradition that the Beta Israel trace back to the service at the temple in Jerusalem. The synagogue is called Gedim, or monastery. This name is used as a disguise. But the elders themselves call it Beta Magdus, the temple, or Mukra, synagogue. There are no Christian symbols in the temple compound. There are no Jewish symbols either. The monks and nuns tend to be elderly people who have come in order to worship and study the traditions, and they will do so for the rest of their lives. A male monk is called Abba, the Hebrew word for father, and a female is called Ima, mother. Male elders cover their heads and wear a fringed garment called the Gabi the equivalent of a Jewish talit. Younger men are not obliged to do so. The central building of the compound is Beta Magdus itself. It is used for prayers and religious services. It has two separate entrances for men and women. Deuteronomy 6, Shema Israel, it is written, and they hung in the neck. Amen. At the center of the temple, there is a pillar. We didn't know where is East, where is Jerusalem. They don't know nothing. So that's why we are make a pillar inside the synagogue. Our families, they pray like a circle. This is represent. Hashem is our God is between us. For, and Yes, 
በጀለት ዳረ ይገኛሉ። ምክንያቱም እናንተ ሰውት ባላላችሁ የሚባል ስንት የተሰጣን ስለነበረ በሸሽት ያሉ አባቶች እዚህ ደርሷል ደርሳ ወለት ማታ ነው ምን ነበር አውራት አንድ ጊዜ ነው ምን ነበር አጾማችንን ጸሎታችንን ማታ ነው ምን ነበር አንበላ እንደሰው እኛ ዛያቶቻችን ተቀድማያቶቻችን ተጥንትም እስራኤልን ይላል እስራኤልን እስራኤል ዘርነን እስራኤል ፈላሻ ዘቀጥቃጭ ምናም ይባላል ዘራችን እስራኤል ነው ይሉና የተሰራኤሉ የሰለሆናችሁ ከኛ ጋራ የማይመለከታችሁ ናችሁ ስደተኞች ናችሁ ተብለው ያለቁ የተሳደሩ ብዙ ወገንና ዞራችን ሁሉ እንዳለቁ እየተገለጸ ነው ሁለተኛ በስተጀርባ ያለው ይሄ ችግር አይከሄድ በሙሉ ተቀላላ ያለውን በስተጀርባ ለለት ቀርቶ ላመት ቀርቶ ለለት ያጣንና ባባዶ ቤት ያለን ሰዎች በመሆናችን አዘንተኛ ሆነን እንወራለን ይሄንንም ግልጽ ነው ማንንም ሊረዳኝ ይገባ The other buildings of the compound include separate quarters for men and women, weaving and pottery houses, a slaughtering house, and a kitchen. The congregation members treat us with traditional Ethiopian bread and jere, and the festive drink tela, which they themselves drink only during Sabbath and holidays. <laughs> The gates of the compound are closed for Sabbath. There is a separate house outside the compound called Tikutabit, which means menstruation house where women stay during menstruation, or 40 days after the birth of a son, and 80 days after the birth of a daughter. I cannot enter this part because if I enter, I will become impure and will have to stay there for seven days. Exhausted by Inspired, we are starting our trip back. Our next destination is a secret synagogue in Mantik. We leave Addis Ababa at dawn. We stop on the way to view our destination in the distance. The secret synagogue where we are heading is located in the valley, surrounded by mountains. According to oral tradition, the founder of the monastery in Mantik was Ima Mogese, a woman who fled there to save her life from persecutions of her fellow villagers. The way to Mantik goes through Ankoba, the former capital of Shor. Despite its being located only about 200 kilometers from Addis Ababa, it takes us the whole day to reach. We drive through difficult terrain, winding roads with sharp turns and steep hills. 
at times the vehicle becomes blocked by jagged rocks, which have to be cleared from the road. Several times our car gets stuck in mud, and entire villages come to help us out. We, in turn, fully pack the car with passengers to give them a ride. Finally, after the nightfall, we arrive in Manta. Just like Giso, Mantek is located at the riverside. We offer a sheep as a welcome gift, and the synagogue members slaughter it in accordance with their tradition. This is uh, what they don't want, this uh, part of the sheep, you know, okay. the internal organs, mm -hmm. which is not uh, eaten, it is not kosher, so they bury it into the ground. While men sleep on the floor, I'm offered a bed with a pillow and blankets. In the morning, we are greeted by the leader of the synagogue, Abba Kidane, and other elders. We are taken a walk around the synagogue compound. There are pottery workhouses and a kitchen where women work hard, grinding barley and corn by hand. Outside the compound, there is a menstruation house to cut the bed. The female with a bleeding a menstruation cycle, they stay here for seven days. The central building is Beta Magdus, the temple. There are not many objects inside the temple. As in other synagogues, there is the chair of Judith. <laughs> The synagogue in Mantek has a special historical significance, since the synagogue was mentioned in historical accounts as long ago as in 1840. At that time, it was visited by German Christian missionaries Reverends Eisenberg and Kraft. This is what one of the missionaries wrote about his visit. May 5, 1840. I went this morning to see the Tabiban in their monastery called Mantek in the forest of Mamrat, about two hours' walk from Ankober. On arriving at the village, I asked for the Alaka, the headmaster, when, after a considerable time, an old man came trembling and so much afraid of me that he was about to return immediately to his house. They wear metabs, traditional neck cords, like the Abyssinians and are skillful in many things, working in iron and clay. <laughs> Uh, 
አንድ ፍረንጅ መጥቶ አው እንግዲህ ብንዋራው ምን ይችላል ያይ ሁድገዳም ብሩስ ፎክ ሲባል እኛ ደሞ ለማን ምን ማን ነው ታችኝ ለማን ፈን እጅል Reverend Eisenberg and Frapp also wrote The king is attached to them but the Abyssinians are in great fear of them considering them sorcerers and will neither enter their houses nor eat with them Their alaka is feared so much that they believe that if he cursed a person the curse would be fulfilled in a short time The Taliban seem to me intentionally to entertain this fear which protects them against the prosecutions of the Abyssinians and prevents intercourse with those who have not the same ideas with them. እና ለዚ ተገለለን የመኖራችን ምስክሩ ተከክለኛት አባቶቻችን ተሰው ምክንያቱም ብንላቸው እንኳን ወደኛ ለመመለስ ነው ወደኛ ለመምጣት እኛ ማንናላቸው እነሱ ማይፈልጉን ስለዚህ በሰው የተጠላ አንኖር ምንም ነው እኛና ንብራሳችን ቸሽገ በዚህ ውስጥ እንኖርአለን በእኔ ሙሉ ጋብቻ ምንም በማንም አይነት ጋብቻ ይሄም ይባል እንኳን ለነጋባቸው ቀርቶ ላይ ላይ እየጠሉን ይያሉ እኛ ማን ፈልጋቸው እነሱ ነው የጋብቻ መሰረት ተነሱ ጋር ይለን ምን ክርስቲያን ለማምሳለ መቸም መመሳሰል እንጂ እኛ ለይተን በልዩነታችን ለጋብቻ መሰረቱ ይሄም የከለከለንም እነሱም እኛ ስለማን ፈልጋቸው እኛ ምንድነው ዛሬ ግን የተስራኤሎች ናቸው ይሄም አሁን ላይ ተደርግ ዘበነ መንግስት ጀምሮ ዛሬ ድረስ አንድ አንድ ስሜቶች ትንሽ ሰዎቹ ወደኛ ለመቅረብ ቢፈልጉን እኛ አቅራቢ ብቻለሁ After the visit to Mantic the missionaries concluded Outwardly they are Christians but they are strongly suspected of being Jews They told me that if I had come on Saturday they would not have received me as on that day they neither go out of their houses nor kindle fires ጥቁጥቤት ብለን ለብቻው መየለየ ነው መሰረት አሁንም ነው ኦሪታው ለመሆናችን ምስክርነቱ ለተሰንበትን ማንንም በሩን ከፍቶ የማይሄድ ወዲያው ወዲህ የማይል ለተሰንበትን በዚህ ባለች ግብያችን ብቻ እናከብር መሆናችን It is time to return to Addis Ababa on the way back we are stopping to enjoy the sunset over the Jemma river flowing through the mountains the silent witnesses of many tribulations and sufferings of the Beth Israel of North Shore In the hope of getting more information about the migration of Jews to North Shore, I'm traveling to Gonda, from where they claim to originate. It is widely believed that the masterpiece of the Ethiopian architecture, the Fasel Castle in Gonda, was built by Beta Israel craftsmen. <laughs> I'm visiting the former Beta Israel village near Gondar called Waleke, known to tourists and locals as Falasha village. The village became a tourist attraction and a souvenir market, where the locals sell handcrafts not even distantly resembling true crafts of Beta Israel. Salamon and Saba making gloves with pink. This is Maganda This is This is old synagogue. How are you? Good, how are you? Ah, uh, yeah. Are you living here? No, no, we was living here. Really? Yeah, we're living here now in Israel. We באמת? מתי תגעת לארץ? פזבוטי! שם אמרו לי בודה, שם אמרו לי כושי. איפה אני נפתח בכלל? We are looking for my father. He was... When we made an eye, he was in the army. So we lost the contact with him. What's his name? אגניו מנלו בחדסה. אגניו מנלו בחדסה. 
ביי ביי. ביי מותק שלי. ביי מותק. ביי ממי שלי. ביי ממלא. ביי צ'או. ביי. 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 But not being able to find in Gondor much information that could shed light on migration of Jews to Noshoa, I'm traveling further to the north, to the Simeon Mountains. The Simeon Mountains reach four and a half thousand meters at their highest peaks. Harsh and inaccessible, the mountains remain the last stronghold of the sovereign Beta Israel kingdom till the 16th century. I'm originally from the village inside the National Park. This village is uh, originally set, uh, settled by the Ethiopian Jewish. And then uh, when they migrate to Israel, and then the, mus the Muslim community, they just uh, settled here. The Ethiopian Jews, they just introduced the pottery. Uh, just <clears throat> as you know, they are, they are not native to Ethiopian. So, uh, they didn't have enough farmland. I'm a native for Ethiopia. So, if I do a pottery, just the local community in my village, the, the community, they just, they will outcast it from the community. Actually, the people, uh, they just treated the Ethiopian Jews badly. When I was a teenager, and then uh, when we go to the market to buy some handcraft prepared by the Ethiopian Jewish. We just covered our face because we assumed that they do have evil spirit. The native people, they assuming that Ethiopian Jewish during the night, they will change themselves and uh, become a hyena. The trip to the north helped me see a clear connection between the Jews of Gondor and those of Noshoa. There is an uncanny likeness between these two communities about 700 kilometers apart. Notably, the inhabitants' occupations and the stigmatization they endure. If the claim of the Balich of Noshoa is true, there must be some Beta Israel elders from the Gondor area who still keep alive the memory of migration from Gondor to Noshoa since all Beta Israel elders and leaders are now residing in Israel, I return to Israel to investigate further. I am a man who is 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 אני שמעתי לא אחת זה שבמאה התשיעית והעשירית בתקופתה של המלכה היהודית לא מעט יהודים הגיעו עד שואה והגיעו לשואה, התבססו שם הממלכה של יהודית, המלכה מסמן גונדר דרך אקסום עד שואה, אני יודע שכל זה היה במסגרת הממלכה שלה, כשהיא רדפה אחרי המלך אמבסה דיב, היא רדפה אחריו עד סמן שואה. הם עדיין שם? לא מעט אנשים, וגם שמעתי את זה מהבית, שעדיין יהודי גוג'אם לא התחילו את העלייה שלהם. שמעתי שלא רק יהודי גוג'אם, אלא שישנם גם מעבר לגוג'אם ואחרי גוג'אם, שהכוונה היא לשואה, שישנם יהודים ולא מעט. ישנם עדיין אנשים שמכנים את עצמם לביתא ישראל ומתנהגים ונוהגים כביתא ישראל. וזה שהתעסקו עם היהודים שנמצאים והיו מרוכזים בגונדר או במחוז גונדר, בצרפון גונדר, זה לא אומר שבמחוזות אחרים לא הגיעו לשם יהודים. The presence of the Beta Israel in Noshua 
is consistent with the many legends that are prevalent in the Beta Israel community of Gondor. האם אתה שמעת משהו על האנשים שעזבו את אזור דמבי, אזור גונדר, וזזו לאזור סימן שואה? אני שמעתי וגם פגשתי אנשים. וכשהתחילו לבנות, להקים את העיר הבירה של אתיופיה מגונדר לאדיס אבבה אז, אז מספרים לקחו כמה יהודים בנאים כדי שיבנו את הארמונות, את העיר אז לקחו אנשים לשם נולדתי בנזרת אתיופיה, מאה קילומטר מאדיס, לכיוון מזרח דרום, וסיימתי י"ב 1989, מיד יצאתי למסע חיפוש של אבא שלי, כי מגיל קטן אני לא יודע מי זה אבא שלי. אז קיבלתי כל מיני אינפורמציה ונסעתי לגולדה. מצאתי את המשפחה שלי, אח של סבתא שלי בפעם ראשונה, והוא הדריך אותי להגיע לאוגרה, ואז מצאתי את סבתא שלי, אימא של אבא, והתחלתי לבדוק על אבא שלי, שאלתי כל מיני שאלות ואמרו לי שהוא לא בחיים, והקומוניסטים הוציאו אותו לאורג, 1979, גיליתי שכולם ביתא ישראל, ולפי חוק השבות בין, בין ליהודי זכאי לארץ. ואז קיבלתי כל האינפורמציה מקונדר, חזרה לבית, והתחלתי לשבת, לספר לסבתא, כי אמנם אימא שלי נולדה בנזרת, סבתא שלי וכל הקרובים שלה במקור הם מג'ירו, זאת אומרת מסמן שואה. והיא אומרת, כן, הם שלנו, אנחנו גם מיהם, וזהו. חוץ מהמשפט הזה, היא לא המשיכה להגיד משהו אחר. אז, לפני 26 שנה, קשה להגיד כי יש לי דם יהודי או משהו כזה, בגלל סטיגמות ואנטישמיות וכל מיני דברים, מאוד קלאסיקל דרך אגב, אנטישמיות באתיופיה. אחר כך אה, אה, דיברה על אה, 
במקור בערך 500 שנה לפני הם באו מגונדר אז כי ראיתי משהו מהנה משותף באזור וואגרה מה שראיתי וגם בכפר אנשי ג'ירו היו באים לבית כפר ניקים אז אותו התנהגות אותו תלבושת אותו שפה While thousands of Jews of Ethiopian origin wage protests against discrimination across the country, how will the news of yet another Ethiopian Jewish community be received in Israel? I will say to you that I have no opinion against the government of the government of the government הטיפול בעלייה האתיופית. כל פעם מדברים עלייה אחרונה. זה המטוס האחרון שאנחנו מעלים. גם שיודעים שיש עוד יהודים לבוא ולומר, הנה, סיימנו. הרי זה דבר מובן, זה דבר ידוע, שמי שאמון על הזהות היהודית הוא לא שר כזה או אחר. מי שאמון על היהדות זה אנשי דת, הרבנות הראשית לישראל. מי שפה שם לא רק מקל, אלא מקלות בגלגלים ומונע את התנועה הזו, זה המצד הלא רבני, זה המצד הלא דתי. אנחנו מדברים בעידן שבו שערי מדינת ישראל פתוחות, כן, בצפון לדרוזים. איחוד משפחות, לא רק אלה שהוצלו בכוונה תחילה, אלא גם מישהו שהולך ומביא לו כלה בסוריה לאחד מהכפרים הדרוזים, נותנים להם להתאחד בישראל. הפלסטינאים, אותו דבר, אצל הקהילה, קהילת ביתי ישראל, אנחנו עוד, עוד לא שם, לא בחוק השיבוט ולא באיחוד המשפחות. עכשיו, שאלת השאלות היא, האם היהדות, הזהות היהודית של אדם נקבעת על פי גודל הנכסים שיש לו? על פי מראה החיצוני שלו, או שבאמת על פי היושר, האמונה, אהבת הארץ, קדוש ברוך הוא, כאילו שם השם. In recent years I have um, begun to hear more and more about a uh, community in Ethiopia that very much resembles Um, the model um, of uh, Bnei Anusim, or of Moranos, that existed in Spain and Portugal. The question of the historicity of their claim, uh, are they really who they say they are, is one that absolutely requires a great deal of additional study. And unless you've been there and met them and heard the stories and learned more about their history and their traditions and their customs, I don't think it's fair or appropriate to just dismiss it out of hand. Jews in Ethiopia, even in the 60s and 50s, they started to do the Aliyah from Gondor, they didn't know them. They did all kinds of studies. הבדיקות מקצועיות, בדיקות uh, לפי חוק של מדינת ישראל, אני חושב מאז מאבק לא, לא נמשך, עדיין יש לך קהילות שנשארו, מגיעים מדי פעם טיפ טיפים. לכן אני בטוח מאמין במדינת ישראל וגם באנשים שהם מקבלי הקלטות וגם ביהדות העולם, כולל יהדות אמריקה, יש לנו הרבה קרדיט כלפיהם ו... I was invited to speak at the committee meeting for immigration from Ethiopia at the Knesset. But the committee chair, 
Avram Nipuse did not yield the floor when it was my turn. <laughs> More than three years have passed since I first visited the community. Belaine is still teaching biology at Kichena High School and exploring the history of his community. His wife Yenenesh and Asal have turned their handcrafts into art. After his Jewish identity had been revealed, Demeki lost his job and has had difficulty finding a new one. He continues collecting traditional songs and teaching the community about modern Jewish practices. Fearing attacks, community members have built a fence to protect Bet Salam Cinema. In spite of fears, they have been getting stronger and stronger in their faith and knowledge of Judaism. The elders of four secret synagogues have decided to express their Jewish identity and teach the youth about their ancient traditions. This raised tensions with the other Jewish communities practicing in secret, as well as with the Coptic Orthodox Church. The representatives of the church have held a meeting where they founded an association to fight this movement. More than once, leaders of the four secret synagogues have received anonymous death threats. However, they strongly believe that the day has come to proudly reveal their identity and traditions to the next generations. Elohim, 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 Elohim,